Howdy everybody. Uh, still busy. Um, a lot of people were asking for information. Uh, I don't know, it's probably about a week or so back about the whole Biden OPEC thing. So I thought I'd let uh, Trisha Curtis and Lynn, Lynn Helms from the NDIC uh, explain that to you and their position. And so leave it up to the smart people, right? So anyways, I thought this was some good information. Links to both the videos will be below. And uh, we should be rigging up on one of the wells tomorrow morning out west. And uh, we'll have a bunch of stuff for you then. So alrighty, y'all be blessed. We'll see ya. Well, and there is a lot of irony to this. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm sure that prices cooling off somewhat have helped you know, make the administration feel a little bit better in the U.S. because oil prices have come up considerably, um, and they have a we we have a, a continued ban on federal leasing in the U.S. And this is where things get really interesting this week because um, I, you know, I actually decided to go ahead and read. There was a lot of stuff coming out of the White House and in politics, and there's so much happening in the oil market right now. But there was a lot of talk, obviously, on OPEC and what the administration has said on OPEC and calling on OPEC to actually increase output. There's a response by Canada as well, and we're going to get into that now. Okay, so the White House um, had a press briefing. So the press briefing of Press Secretary Jen Paskey had on, this is dated August 11th. So I actually read this um, because I had, you know, seen and heard the, the commentary that had come out on, on the OPEC comments, especially from Canada, with regards to the U.S. calling for more output. So needless to say, inflation and OPEC are talked about quite a bit in this press briefing, um, which I'll, I'll read to and insight from. So I read through it, and then I also watched it. But on, um, on August 11th, we also had a statement by the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, on the need for, um, on the need for reliable and stable global energy markets. And I'm going to read this out loud in case you um, haven't logged into the you know, WhiteHouse.gov and looked at it. But basically, he says, this is, quote, higher gasoline costs, if left unchecked, risk harming the ongoing global recovery. The price of crude oil has been higher than it was um, at the end of 2019, before the onset of the pandemic. While OPEC Plus has recently agreed to production increases, these increases will not fully offset previous production cuts that OPEC Plus imposed during the pandemic until well into 2022. At a critical moment in the global recovery, this is simply not enough. President Biden has made clear that he wants Americans to have access to affordable and reliable energy, including at the pump. Although we are not a party to OPEC, the United States will always speak to international partners regarding issues of significance that affect our national economic and security affairs in public and private. We are engaging with relevant OPEC members on the importance of competitive markets in setting prices. Competitive energy markets will ensure reliable and stable energy supplies, and OPEC Plus must do more to support the recovery. So this is the U.S. White House, the, the Biden administration calling on OPEC to increase output because they are seeing pressure in prices. Now, I am. it is not a stretch to say that this is these this these price increases um, and inflation in the U.S. in particular is what's driving this. So it is not just oil prices. And we've talked about this in previous podcasts. Seeks to lower emissions. This is despite a deliberate push from our federal government to transition away from oil and gas. Alberta's government will continue to push for new pipelines and new markets to support the industry, the jobs and the prosperity it creates. The bottom line is the world needs Alberta's energy. Albertans own the, the third largest oil reserves in the world and our industry is at the forefront of innovation and technology to reduce emissions and produce oil with the lowest carbon footprint. That's why we're all that's why we are well positioned to meet global demand and support a post-pandemic economic recovery. We look forward to the Biden administration's continued support for an integrated North American energy market in the months ahead which will create jobs and prosperity on both sides of the border. So this is absolutely relevant and it, it it's beyond smacking of hypocrisy. I mean the We've discussed the hypocrisy of this administration on energy um, at length in these previous in, in podcasts, but you cannot say yes on Nord Stream two, which is the ga you know gas pipeline from Russia to Germany. You can't say I'm okay with that. You can't cancel Keystone XL the first day you're in office. Cancel that actual permit from an ally, um, and in places in the U.S. and in Canada where you know you can actually impact um, you, you can actually impact. GHG and ESG more in these countries with rule of law than you can in places like China in the Middle East. So the, it's beyond hypocr hypocritic um, of this administration to come and call out on OPEC to actually increase output, especially in light of the fact of canceling Keystone XL, which I think the 
the ministry, um, the minister does a fantastic job of explaining all that and saying, essentially, you know, why wouldn't you allow this production coming from Canada? So you did that day one, and now you're calling for increased output. And in addition to that, which the, the press briefing does not get into, but in addition to that, we have a continued ban on federal leasing on U.S. federal lands that they, that was put in place um, by the Climate Change Executive Order 14008. And that is, you know, that's is beyond hypocrisy hypocritic to say we have a ban on leasing in the U.S., but we're asking other people to increase it. And so the White House's response to this, um, and this does, you know, this was talked about at length. And I'm going to also talk about the piece on inflation because. Talk just a little bit about OPEC. Um, let me see. So OPEC has agreed uh, starting in the current month, not back in the month that we're reporting on, but in August, uh, to start increasing production 400,000 barrels a day each month. Uh, as you know, the federal administration, the Biden administration called on them to put more oil on the market in order to uh, lower gasoline and diesel prices. Um, I included in my director's cut uh, a quote from the governor's statement. Uh, we are very frustrated with this approach. Uh, it's our take that the administration is doing everything it can to hamper domestic production and then calling on imported oil to lower the price of gasoline. That's not the nature of imported oil. So um, it, it's very frustrating. And I included that along with a, a link to Governor Burgum's statement there uh, about that position. Um, Fort Berthold activity flat as well. Uh, we do see a record number of wells producing 16,825 and um, I'll just jump from there to to the fact that uh, U.S. crude oil stocks are very low they're below average uh, world stocks pretty much supply demand is in balance and that that means that that uh, $70 crude oil price is pretty sticky that, that's uh, it's going to be hard to move it off of that number 